get into leadership, I believe one of the key ways of leading, one of the things my dad did for me is he put so much into being a parent. He had, he, he's always a hustler and he's doing multiple jobs, but he always showed up at my little league games. He coached me all the time. Wow. And I'd see the car going like that because he's coming in from New England. He's traveling sales guy. And uh, I just didn't want to let him down. Uh, I think the best way to motivate someone is you put so much into it that when you ask back, they do it because they don't want to let you down. They're not afraid of you. They're not intimidated by you. They just don't want to let you down. I think you have to earn that. He earned that. It didn't, wasn't because he was my dad. He earned it. And I don't think when, you know, I've done a number of talks to the military, as you know, I've spoke for the Marine Corps at Quantico and I spoke at West Point. And that resonates with them. You you don't follow someone because they have a stripe or right. I'm talking to people that they would go, I love that guy. That's someone that earned their respect. And so I, I, when, I, when I talk to people who are new to leadership or anybody, I just say, look, what have you done for them before you ask? That's an important question. Mm. You know, it's like if it's walking up to somebody and say, hey, Chris, you know, you're behind your sales goals. You go, oh, thanks. I didn't notice. <laughs> right. Right. Or at, I say, hey, Chris, I notice your numbers aren't what you want them to be. Is there something you could be doing or that I could do to help you sure. with that? What sure. are the five things you're doing? Well, why don't you not do the last two? Because the first three are most important. I'll help you with that. Right. Now we're in it together. I'm helping you by narrowing it. Now you're, we're in it together. Otherwise, you're just a walking spreadsheet. So. Wow. They, see, this this is this is what I I love about talking to you is that I mean I feel like as soon as we're finished like I'm 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 gonna be a smarter person because <laughs> the I mean and, and we've had numerous conversations but the idea of being able to kind of identify and understand what direction a company may be going a group a team. I mean, you've mentioned that you've, you've talked to our military. I mean, that just doesn't happen. I mean, somebody just doesn't wake up and go, hey, let me call Tom. I yeah. met Tom three days ago. Let, let me do that. I mean, you have to put yourself in that situation. And when I spoke for the Marines, it was 1,700 Marines at Quantico, Virginia, with 700 watching in Iraq. Oh. And you are challenged to make them feel. So I, right. so I take time to talk to whoever's asking me to come speak. And that's the question I said when I leave. Now, where, why are you asking me? To, you said about the Marine Corps. I, I spoke at Oracle World. It was 1,500 CIOs. And, a, and the Marines were, had just become a big customer of my company, NetApp. Okay. And a colonel in the Marine Corps walked up to me and he says, do you give motivational speeches? As I said, I do, but they're typically to my own company. I'm not, right. you know, it's not like my living. And he said, well, General Kelly would like to invite you to come to Quantico, Virginia. And I was like, wow. Wow. Oh, I said, to do what? He said, well, we want you to talk about, what do you want me to talk about? I said, culture and leadership. I said, to the Marine Corps? I had just had dinner with about eight Marines of different ranks that okay. night, uh, the night before. I said, uh -huh. And they were talking about, I asked, what's the proudest three moments of Marine Corps history? And it didn't matter that Bella Wood, Guadalcanal, you know, whatever, whatever they, Kusan, whatever they decided to talk about, they all knew and they had detailed knowledge. I said, how do you know all that? They said, Marines died. Marines die. Every wow. Marine knows about it before you leave Paris Island. Wow. And like, and you want me to talk about culture? Right, right, exactly, exactly. So I come in the night before, General Mattis is a very famous guy now. General right. Mattis was at the table. General Kelly was the guy who invited me. Okay. And he said, uh, you're probably wondering why you're here. We're having drinks, having fun. I'm speaking in the morning. I'm like, yeah. And he said, you're going to speak to a demoted group of Marines. I said, really? He said, it was the guys making the vehicles when they were getting their arms and legs blown off every time they went out by the roadside bombs in Iraq. Wow. And he said, and he said, they hear crap from the media. They hear crap from the Congress with all the flag waving that hasn't given them the vehicle. They, they know how to solve it. They won't fund it. And he said, and worst of all, the Marines on the ground don't want to hear it. They're <laughs> like, you guys suck. And so he said, I want you to challenge them. <laughs> 1,700 Marines. And I'm in there. And I'm, it's going great. 
I had two NetApp guys in the front row, one guy named Mark Weber, right at the end. He said, how are we getting out of here? It didn't go so well. <laughs> the two generals were in the front. It's going great. And finally, I said, there's so many things. They go, Hoo-ha! right? The Marine Corps. And at first, I was like, God bless you. But then it, it, was, it was like a revival meeting. Mm. And, the, and I said to them, there's so many things I'm impressed by. Let me tell you something I'm not impressed by. That's your attitude. 1700 chairs just shot forward. They looked at wow. me like you got it. Shit. You came to Quantico, Virginia. Are you gonna say that to us? Wow. During war? And I, and the only two people smiling were the two generals. They were like, this is what we <laughs> and, and by the way, he told me the General Mattis was made this point. He said, Look, I give a lot of talks, these guys listen to me, but there's only so many times the same person can say the same things and have them hear it. Sure. I'm taking you from outside. We don't have people come in here from outside. And I want you to challenge him. I'm going to build you up as my guy. And I want you to go after him. And I said, and after they, I, I let that sit for probably, I would say, two minutes, which is an mm. amazingly long time when you're in a room like that with angry Marines. Of course. And, and I did eye contact across the room. And then I said, you are you are so angry that the press is on you. You're angry that the Congress is not fixing, helping you fix the problem, giving you the funds. You're angry with the guys on the ground don't understand how hard you're trying. I said, you didn't join the Marine Corps to have someone else make you fulfilled. You joined the Marine Corps to be the point of the spear. You are the point right. of the spear. There are people who have come home with one arm, one leg that would never have come home six months ago because of what you've done. I said, let me tell you something. You are lucky fuckers. That's exactly what I said. I'm sorry about that. Wow. So I got a YLF shirt for the Marine Corps. They went nuts. Oh my God. <laughs> that's that's a great story. I spoke for another part of the Marine Corps and the Navy out in San Diego, and about 30 guys who were in that first talk came and created a tunnel for me to walk out and told me what it meant to me. No way. It was cool. It was wow. very, very cool. That's awesome. Well, the whole, the whole point of that was, though, that just to wrap up real quick on that. Sure. That if I had to say the steps of things, find something that you're really passionate about. Because if you don't really like doing it, you're not going to be that good at it. Right. And I really realized I love that type of selling, enterprise okay. selling. Secondarily, if you're, not, if you're not really a leader in it, it's not what drives you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Be an individual contributor and do a fantastic job at that. Everybody's got a role that they love. Do that. And then finally, I think it's very important to be skilled enough with how you speak. It doesn't always have to be speeches. Right. But I tell students, I tell young people, if there's five people in a room and one person's always speaking and giving their opinion, the other four are not getting ahead of that person. <laughs> that's true. That's if true. If you're really true. smart and quiet, that's not a great Right. <laughs> As far as career advice. And so, you know, I, I recommend Toastmasters to a lot of young students. They okay. started a chapter at Notre Dame after a talk I gave there. And uh, a young woman started and did a fabulous job. Toastmasters is teaching techniques for speaking. Right. With a friendly audience. Sure. And people become very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it's a, those three things, I think, if you had to say what worked for you, that, that set it up. All right. So you know. When we talk about culture, it, it has to do with will we sacrifice for each other? How important mm -hmm. is it to me and to you that we win together? Right. That, that I will do whatever I can to make sure I got, you know, I have your back. You know for a fact. And that's that's what they did in that. And I think NetApp at its best was that way. I believe mm. Notre Dame football at its best is that way. This Notre Dame football team. Um, Lance Taylor's the running back coach, and I've got to know Lance well. Okay. And he called me preseason this year. He said, would you talk to the running backs on culture? And he and I have had great talks wow. on culture. Wow. Now, remember, Clark Lee wanted to talk about culture. Right. Lance Taylor wanted to talk about the culture of his running back room. And then he called me two days later. He said, Tommy Rees, who I've, I've, I've communicated with Tommy for a few years, but I okay. never um, – I'd spoken to him on the phone even, but I've never seen him live until I'm – Okay. He said, Tommy would appreciate if you would talk to the offense. So that's what I ended up doing instead of, and I spent probably 40 minutes talking about the culture, what I believe the elements of culture and the importance of culture. Mm. And then we did about a 45 minute Q and A. And I got notes from so many guys on the team 
And then Tommy and I had a one-on-one after that, and Ian Book and I had a one-on-one after that. Wow. And the thing that struck me, you can tell by the questions you're, you're getting asked if they really understand, they right. really care about what we're right. talking about. This team was so into, we want to do something extraordinary together. We believe we can, even with the pandemic and all the things. So it's been an incredible joy to me to watch them sure. do it, knowing what they put into this thing. And the leadership that, that Brian Kelly's leadership on this team clearly, to me, is by far the best leadership team we've had since Lou Holtz. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Clearly. Hands down. Hands and, down. Uh, you know, some fans, I don't know if they always get that, but these, the way they look at each other, the way they talk about each other, the way they talk about Tommy Reese, the way they talk about Clark Lee, the way he talks about them and their families, they, he know, they know he cares about them. That's the essence of culture. You know, again, they've earned the right to ask back, and these guys want to right. give it to them. Right. 